Welcome back to Garden Ninja. Today I'm going to be showing you how to lay a hedge. And I'll be showing you different methods for different styles of plants, from bare roots all the way up to pot grown plants. So come on, let's get cracking. So first things first, you're going to need a number of key tools before you start to plant your hedge. So you're going to need some canes so that you can measure out distances either between plants or the row of hedges that you're going to lay. You also may need a trundle wheel like this which is used for measuring long distances in metres. So it's really useful if you've got a really long run of hedging. You're probably going to need a tape measure for the smaller measurements. You'll need a strong garden fork and likewise a strong sharp hopefully cleaner than mine, garden spade. Trusty wheelbarrow for whether you're using bare roots or container hedging plants to move them around and also to lift off any turf or spoil from the soil that you're going to be excavating. So you need those basic tools and then we're good to move on to plants. So here I am in my own garden and this area is brand new to be developed but the issue is it's completely exposed. So the wind rushes in off this field and will batter anything in this area. So I need to put a hedge in to help protect any garden or design that I'm going to implement a bit later on. So hedging is really good providing a break from the wind. So it doesn't stop the wind, but it baffles it. So rather than a fence that sends the wind over and then crashing in into like a wind pocket, what a hedge will do is it's, the wind will hit it and then it baffles through, so it helps distribute the wind. It's great for the environment, you get all sorts of creeper crawlies, birds and other animals that will use the hedge for protection and for habitat and it will also look really nice. So that's the reason why I'm fitting a hedge today. So there are a number of different types of plants you can use for hedging. Now I've chosen an evergreen variety to give me a bit of winter colour and also some interest. Behind me is Griselenia, there's a hawthorn and that drops its leaves in the winter so whilst it's lovely in the summer, there's lots of leaf fall, it's quite tricky to prune, whereas with these, they're a lot simpler, they keep the colour, and it's a lot easier to start off with. They're also used to really windy conditions, the coastal plants, so it's going to be great for this aspect, and they're not too fast growing either. So I've done my research and I've picked a plant that's really suitable for the site, because no matter what you do, if you pick something that's unsuitable, you'll never get it to establish properly. So go with what works, do your research and then you're going to be steps ahead when it comes to planting your hedge. Use your trundle wheel to work out the distance of your hedge so that you can work out how many plants you're going to need. After that I always use a cane to mark each metre so that you can work out the spacing of each of the plants. So once you've measured out the boundary of your hedge you then have to prepare the ground and it really is key. It's a matter of measure twice, cut once. So you want to put loads of effort into making sure that you're giving your plants the best start in life. Now here we've got loads of turf, basically it's a paddock. So what I need to do before I can do anything with the soil is to take off this top layer of turf. Now you can do it manually, which I'm going to show you, um, but that can be quite backbreaking. Um, good cardio, great if you're not going to go to the gym, but on this scale, I'm probably going to use something a little bit faster. But I'll show you how to do it by hand and then I'll move on to the heavy machinery. First things first, I'm going to slice through the top layer of the turf with a sharp spade like this. And this is where you'll see it's a really good workout. And this is the same for getting rid of any turf when you want to lift it. So what I'm going to do is cut the outline of the turf that I'm going to remove. So I'll show you with this small example. Cutting through to a neat rectangle. I've taken off the top layer. So most of these roots are gone. You don't want to leave too much root in because the grass may just grow back. So you're only taking off a sliver, like so. Now you can either transplant that somewhere else or you can turn it into turf loam which I'll show you next. So what you can do with all those sods that you're going to be cutting off to get your hedge in is to simply lay them down somewhere out of the way upside down 
And what will happen is that the grass will slowly die and then start to break down with the soil that's attached to them. You'll end up with a really nice, rich loam, almost like a topsoil. But it'll probably take a good few months, but if you've got the space, put it somewhere, maybe at the back of a border out the way, leave it to rot down, and then you've got free soil. Fantastic. So now that we've finished lifting all of the turf and we know where the hedge is going to go, I'm going to cultivate the ground. But again, because there's a lot of ground here to cultivate, I don't really fancy using a spade and a fork. So I was thinking of something a little faster and I'm going to use this petrol powered cultivator. So I've just finished the third pass with the cultivator over this strip of land. And as you can see here, broken up the ground into quite a nice tilth-like structure. So that means that it's sort of like a fine crumb, different sizes, and which will help with drainage. But what you don't want to do when you're cultivating is to over-cultivate the ground. And what that means is that you've broken up the ground so much that it turns almost into like a dust. Um, it will be far too free draining, it will damage the soil structure and the plants will struggle. So you don't want that. However, on ground like this that's not been cultivated in about 20 years, using a petrol cultivator can save you loads of time and effort. So keep cultivating until you get to the depth that you want and then stop when you get to like a nice crumb structure. So now that I've finished removing the turf and cultivating the land, it's time for the fun part, which is getting all these grizzlenias in. So what you're going to need is a fork and a spade. And we're going to go around and then measure out the distance between the plants lay them all out and then start to dig them in. So the distance is really important and it will depend on the species of plant that you're using. So always check something like the RHS website, which is a great resource for planting distances. So once you've got your hedge plants all marked out and you've got the distance between them, you can start to plant. So I'm gonna use this as an example. So what you want to do is mark the position of the plant. Usually I just give it a good squeeze into the soil so you can see the pot shape. And then using, a spade first, with a sharp clean edge, you want to dig out a hole twice as wide and I usually go for a depth and a half of a pot as well. So dig that out. Because we've cultivated the soil, this is super easy now. Now if you're planting bare root, you do this in a different fashion. So bare root plants are planted when they're dormant during the winter months. So you plant the bare roots closer together and they're a much smaller plant. So they take a bit longer to establish, but they're much cheaper. But it's probably best to watch that video to really understand how to plant bare root. And once you've done that, you get your spade. No, you don't, you get your fork, sorry. You just want to loosen up the earth. And the reason why you're doing this is so that those new roots that the plant's going to send out can easily make their way to the soil and establish. If it's all compacted, you're going to really struggle and so will your plants. So just loosen all that up. There we go. And taking your plant, you just want to tap around the edge to loosen it up and carefully ease it out. You can see here, this is a really good specimen. You can see all the roots there, it's not too root bound. I watered these the night before, as you should do with all new plants before you plant them. So I'm just going to start to break that up slightly and then pop that in. And as you'll see, it's a bit too low down. So what I need to do is backfill a little bit more because you only want to plant as deep as the top of the plant from when it arrives. So you don't want to bury it because the stem will rot. I think that's all right. There we go. Backfill. breaking up any big clods if there are any left because you don't want air pockets you want it to be really well compacted in around the base it is a bit more. and then a good tip is using the back of your heel use my left one you can just carefully around the base heel it in making sure it's got good contact with the soil and that it's not going to settle or drop too much there we go. 
So that's my first one in. Looks pretty level to me. Um, another tip is not to add compost, organic matter, um, into the trench when you're digging it because what will happen over time is compost will degrade and settle so with hedging always put them in <clears throat> to quality topsoil and subsoil don't add compost to your trench but do mulch afterwards so I'll show you that a bit later on but right now I've got 299 of these bad boys to go in so best get a wiggle on if I'm going to make the tea So there we go, the hedge is finally in after a really long day and lots of hard graft. So what I need to do now before I go for a cup of tea is to water all this and make sure it's really well irrigated. With any new hedge you need to make sure that in the first few years that it's well watered. There's no point putting all this hard work in just to let them fend for themselves. So what I'm probably going to do now actually is lay a seeper hose that I will lay around these hedge plants and then I can just turn the tap on for half an hour every couple of days as the weather depends and keep these watered. So I've been Garden Ninja. If you've liked this video, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? There's plenty of other videos and how-tos, things that you can do around the garden on that channel. So thanks for watching and happy gardening. <laughs>